wife asleep in bed. She hears the noise, she turns her head, but he's gone. And I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up the hill, one disappears, but one's left standing still. And I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come. You've been left behind. My friend, I have a very important message for you from a loved one or a friend who left this tape behind. They were concerned about your eternal destiny. And that's why you're listening to me at this time. Perhaps you have seen the headlines like these in the paper recently. If you haven't, you're going to, because one of the most significant events in human history has just taken place. Those who loved you enough to leave this tape behind are gone. They're not coming home again, ever. I am here to explain what has happened to them and to give you a solemn warning about what you're going to experience in the next few years. The good news is your loved ones are with the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, every believer on planet Earth is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who had trusted Christ before this event are gone. They're not coming back. You will never see them again as you once knew them. This prophetic event has been recorded in the Bible for thousands of years. Christians were not shocked by this event. They were looking forward to this event, as a matter of fact, with great expectation. They knew that Jesus Christ would return for his people. In fact, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, in verse 51, the Bible begins to say, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The Bible goes on to say in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Bible says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then it says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm sure that this mysterious disappearance is a great shock to you, as it has been a shock to people worldwide. Let me warn you about something, though. The media and the government are going to issue lies about what has happened. Don't accept it. The Bible warns that lies will be formulated to deceive people about what has taken place. In fact, in the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, the Bible says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power in signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I want to say this, do not believe the lie. Your friends and loved ones are with Jesus Christ. They were Christians and they're gone. And you will never, ever see them again as you once knew them. I want you to listen to me very carefully at this time because what you're going to experience in the next few years is going to be of enormous importance to your life. This period of time that you're about to live through is called the Tribulation and the Great Tribulation. There's going to come on the scene a world leader who is going to bring peace to the world. In fact, the whole world is going to follow him. Following that three and a half years of peace, there's going to be three and a half years of cataclysmic judgment such as the world has never experienced before. In fact, 
The scripture talks about this in Revelation chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. It says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went out and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial in the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became as blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, and because thou hast judged thus, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. and Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial, the Bible says, and upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven, because their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. A great world leader is going to come to power who is called the Antichrist. He will be the leader of the world during the period called the tribulation. In fact, in Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says these words, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet come. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The Bible then says, For then shall the great tribulation be such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, the days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, the Bible says, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Whatever you do, don't be deceived by the Antichrist. Jesus Christ is going to return at the close of the tribulation. In fact, the Bible talks about this in Matthew chapter 24 where it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. During the next seven years, you are going to be encouraged to take what is called in the Bible the mark of the beast. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This mark will be in the forehead or in the hand, the Bible says. Whatever you do, don't take the mark of the beast, or you'll be eternally damned. There are no exceptions. The Bible goes on to say, in Revelation chapter 14, some important words. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, 
because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Do not worship the Antichrist or accept the mark of the beast. In the next few years, we're going to experience 21 severe judgments. In fact, the Bible talks about one-third of the earth's water being turned to blood. It talks about great hailstones of a hundred-pound weight are going to fall from heaven. You need to read the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. God's Word is true, and it'll help you if you'll turn to it and read it from beginning to end. Everything it says is true and is going to take place. God's judgment is coming on the earth very soon, very, very soon in catastrophic proportions. My friend, what should you do? Let me say that first, you need to realize that Jesus Christ is your only hope. He is the Savior of the world. In fact, the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God still offers everlasting life to every man, woman, boy, and girl on the face of planet Earth. I think, secondly, you need to realize that unless you repent of your sin, God is going to judge you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It goes on in verse Number 23, and says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fact, the book of Revelation warns us in chapter 20 where it says, And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I think the third thing you need to understand is this. It's time for you to fall on your knees and cry out for mercy to God, and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your eternal soul depends on it. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It goes on to say, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you don't call upon the Lord and ask him for his mercy, and for forgiveness of sin, for your salvation, there is no hope for you. You need, right now, today, to make a commitment to God. I mean a real commitment to God that you will not, no matter what takes place in your life, worship the beast or the Antichrist. That you will not receive the mark of the beast. You need to have that firm commitment deep down in your heart because your eternal destiny depends on it. If you worship the beast, if you receive the mark of the beast, you'll be damned forever. In fact, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, night nor day, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. My friend, if you believe what you've just heard, why don't you pray this prayer? and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and be your Savior. Just pray, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I don't want to be judged. I want you to come into my heart and save my soul. I believe you died and rose again for me and that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Please save me today. My friend, if you've done that, let me mention the booklet that's in the back of the, your video frame. That booklet's called A Tribulation Survival Guide. This booklet was written for your benefit to help you to know what to do during the next several years. Without it, you're going to be lost. You're not going to know what to do. So I hope you'll read it carefully 
and it'll help you for the future. Life was filled with guns and wars And everyone got trampled on the floor I wish we'd all been ready Children died, the days grew cold A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold And I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind The sun has come, you've been left behind There's no time to change your mind How could you have been so blind? The father spoke while the demons died The sun has come You've been left behind.